I am literally dead, dying, and deceased over this series, okay? How has it taken me this long to read it? It's incredible. We're gonna talk all about it in this video. So freaking buckle up and strap in, because it's about to go down. Okay, Miley, like, calm it down. <laughs> friends. Welcome to Miley's Reading Corner. Maybe that's what I should start calling all my reading videos for the 2023 season. I kind of like it. It just came out of my head just now, but we sit in my little cozy chair in my office and talk about all the books. I'm already tucking my hair behind my head because I just can't have it in front of my face because we've got something extremely important to talk about, okay? <sighs> How is this series so good? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to talk about. I, yeah, my thoughts are going to be crazy disjointed and there's going to be a lot of, let's just call it personality in this video, okay? Because I cannot contain my love and joy and excitement and wonder at the series that is A Court of Thorns and Roses. I feel like there's an acronym for it. A Qatar, I don't know how you say it though. Listen guys, I'm a newbie at this, okay? I know this series has been around for a long, long time. It's been a cult classic for forever, but I just now got around to reading it. So I don't know all the ins and outs of what to call it and all the minutia, but I am so excited to film this video and talk all about it because it's like my new favorite series. <laughs> Bomb dropped. What? I love it so much. So let's just jump right in. I've got no real format other than I'm just gonna tell you why I love this series and why you should definitely read it if you haven't. So just, okay, Riley, pull it together. We gotta do this in an organized fashion. Whew. Okay, I'm gonna calm down a little bit. All right, to set the scene, the first book is kind of a Beauty and the Beast-esque inspired fantasy series about a girl named Farah. Okay, and here's another caveat I have to make. So I read these books, knowing zero about them. Like the only thing I had heard was Beauty and the Beast inspired romance fantasy. That's literally all I heard. So I had a rare experience of what it must have felt like to read Harry Potter before the movies came out, where people grew up saying Hermione's name is Hermione or however they mispronounced Hermione in their head for years and then figured out how to really pronounce it once they watched the movies or listened to the audiobooks or whatever. I did that with some of these characters. I've never had that experience before. I didn't know how to pronounce these characters' names. So if I say them wrong in this video, I'm very sorry, okay? I'm I'm actually making Eric listen to the audiobooks of them because I loved the series so much and I thought he would really like the world build of it. He's not a romance guy. This series is so much more than just a romance series. I figured he would like it and he's enjoying it so far. Um, but I learned from him listening to the audiobooks that I'm saying a couple characters wrong. So I call the main character Farah, and I think the audiobooks is like Feyre. So I'm just gonna say Farah because that's in my brain what it is. But then the worst offender is the audiobook calls the main love interest Resand and not Rysand, which is what I called him. So I called him Rysand and Rice for short. And the audiobook calls him Rysand and Reese for short. So you guys, what do I do? I'm so conflicted. Let me know down below if you're an OG A Court of Thorns and Roses fan and how do you pronounce his name? Let me know down below. For the purposes of today's video, I am so sorry if it drives you crazy, but I'm gonna say what I pronounce the characters as. I think those are the only two that I got kind of off, but all this to say. It is a Beauty and the Beast inspired romance fantasy set in a high fae world with humans. It centers around Farah, the main character who is a human who accidentally kills a fae disguised as a wolf in their animal form. And that high fae that she killed was a subject of the High Lord of the Spring Court, Tamlin. And he is a high fae who comes to her home and basically demands a life for a life. He's going to kill her, but she makes a bargain with him that she will come back with him and live with him. That will suffice. So much more unfolds in this first book that is just so intricate and wonderfully layered. Oh, I just love this series so much. I read the first book and I really liked it. I loved the world building of the first book. I loved the humans versus Fae. I loved learning about all the seven kingdoms, the different courts. I loved learning about Tamlin's powers and seeing kind of the history of the world unfold with the conflict in Amarantha, 
you know, taking them all captive under the mountain. And I really, really loved the world build. That was my favorite part of the first book. I also really, really loved how well we got to know Farah, how inside of her head we were, how we just got to see so much of her coping mechanisms and her survival and how much grit and tenacity and you know hardness she had to have to get through years of starvation and being the sole provider for her family at freaking 15. Man you just automatically love her. You sympathize with her. She's just such a well-rounded really really likable main character. And then you meet Tamlin who very quickly becomes just the sweetest. Like he you know, you think of him as this beast as he captures her and takes her back to his lair, if you will, of his castle. But he's so compassionate toward her and he treats her so kindly and he sets her family up and gets them out of poverty. He seems to treat his friends and his subjects well. A lot unfolds behind the scenes with Tamlin. He, you learn that he's pretty complicated actually and that there's a curse placed upon him and all isn't what it seems. There's a lot that goes down in that first book. And I really liked the first book. I especially loved the last probably third of the book where they are under the mountain. She is fighting against Amarantha and is that how you say it? Amarantha? Ugh, I hope. Just add it to the friggin list of the characters names I pronounce wrong. I love watching Farrah go through all the tasks, defeating the worm and getting Rysan's help with like the puzzle thing, figuring out the riddle, the huge twist at the end. I won't spoil it if you haven't seen it but there is an incredible twist on the final task and her mission seems impossible but she makes it work and figures it out and something shocking and insane happens and then the seven high lords come together and essentially spoiler alert turn her into a fae and she's a fae for the rest of the series so i loved it loved it loved it loved it loved it i only gave it four stars on goodreads and not five and here's why i thought that the romance between farah and tamlin was more situational than actual love they were in the right place at the right time. They both needed what the other could provide at that time. And the stakes were so incredibly high that emotions run wild. And the person that's in front of you is the person that you love. It's much more circumstantial that they got together and they fell in love than it was really about them knowing each other and cherishing each other and loving each other for who they really were. I don't feel like they fully got to know one another and fully appreciated each other. And I thought that the romance was over the top gushy. Okay, like over the top gushy. And I'm a fan of gushy romance. Like I don't mind it at all. I think it's a fun escape. I like it. I like the feel goods but it was just too much gush for me. And so I finished the first book thinking that was good. I liked the story. I have no interest in reading more about these characters. And I was dead set that I wasn't going to read the second book. Then Eric made me an advent calendar of books for Christmas. And one of the books that I opened on one of the days was the second book in the series because he knew that I had read the first one and I had rated it four stars on Goodreads. So he bought me the second one. So I thought, oh, okay, I'll read the second one since he got it for me. You guys. Okay, I literally, I honestly truly don't even have words. I read the second one and very quickly realized, oh, the reaction that I had to the first book and not truly believing their love story fully and not loving all the mushy gushy generic romance was completely and totally 100% on purpose supposed to make me feel that way. Because the second freaking book turns everything you know completely upside down. I have never read a book like this before. I've never read a series that totally flips itself on its head completely in a, such an incredible, meaningful, and just like make sense kind of way, you know? The journey that you take with the second book is just so unique. It is such a unique read and I love the way Sarah J Mass writes it. I mean it's so realistic. It's so followable. I mean you you start the second book still rooting for Tamlin and Farah, and you're like yeah they haven't had their mating bond yet but I'm sure they'll get there 
It's okay, Ferris just adjusting to her new life, being the lady of the spring court, and there are some things she doesn't like about it, but that's okay. Like, she will, she'll get used to it, it's fine. And then it's, Tamlin's being really protective, like almost overly protective, and you know, he's not really listening to her, but it's all because he loves her, and it's all because he wants to take care of her, and he feels like she's done plenty by sacrificing what she sacrificed at the end of the third task in the first book. So he's really just looking out for her. But then it slowly just kind of gets worse and worse. And you realize that number one, they aren't communicating. They are bad communicators. They don't freaking talk about their feelings. They just react to each other and butt heads because Farrah wants to be given the opportunity to have freedom. I mean, that's the whole crux of her trauma. She hates being made to feel like she's trapped. And Tamlin simply cannot get past his protective nature to untrap her and give her what she wants. He won't talk about his feelings. He won't talk about the fact that he's scared. He won't share his experience of being a leader with her and and ask for her help and get her input and her insight. They just aren't serving each other anymore. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. And you watch Farah fall freaking apart from all the trauma that she's endured from guilt she feels for what she had to do at the trials and Hamlin get more stressed and desperate to protect not just Farrah but his realm and deal with the conflict and the war that's clearly coming. They just butt heads like crazy. They do not know what each other needs and freaking Tamlin pushes her to the point of no return and good for her for being like I gotta get out of this. And so it's so funny because after reading the first book and the introduction of Rysand who is my favorite character, I love him so much, you hate him in the first book. You absolutely hate him and that's on purpose. And the deal that he makes with Farah in the first book that she has to spend a week out of every month with him, you literally in that moment think, oh my God, I'm gonna have to read her going with freaking rice sand for a week out of every month. That is so annoying. That's gonna be the source of the conflict for the next book. Like, oh, I don't even want to read that. I don't even like him. Like, ew, no, I'm so annoyed by that. I'm not looking forward to reading that. You go from that attitude at the end of the first book to rice sand is her freaking saving grace. You're like dying for it to be the week that she goes to Rysand because it's just so different there and she has freedom and she has encouragement for learning her powers and learning to read and growing her skills. Rysand just is there to support her in the way that she actually needs and their banter back and forth is just so good. You can tell that throughout the book they really truly get to know each other and it is such a juxtaposition with Farah and Tamlin's relationship because there's nothing convenient and there's nothing right timing about Rysand and Farah's friendship and then relationship. They fall in love eventually because they like each other and they work well together and they communicate and you watch all that happen and as you're watching it happen, you're realizing, oh my God, the foil is supposed to be Tamlin, not Rysand. The foil of the actual real romance is the setup of the first book. What the heck? I mean, it just blows my mind to even think about and talk about. It's so clever. It's so interesting. I just freaking love it. It's smart as crap and it blew my mind. I love the second book because you just go on this journey with Farah, and it feels so realistic and it doesn't feel rushed. It doesn't feel like convenient. It feels like truly what the characters have to do. I mean, it feels like they're real life. And so slowly she and Rysand develop a relationship. She goes to be there and the whole, oh my gosh, that's another whole thing about the second book that just blew my mind was the revelation that the night court is just a cover for Rysand's real court and the people that he holds dearest in life and his subjects that he protects by sacrificing himself and becoming the bad guy under the mountain for 50 years solely to keep the secret of the safety of his true people. I mean, it's just incredible what intelligent, creative build of a world. I just absolutely love it. And the character of Rysand is just Mm, I love him so much. He is so layered. He's like a freaking onion. He's like Shrek. He's got layers. And then not to mention, that's just like the interpersonal relationships that happen, but the actual like plot and conflict of the book is so fascinating. War is building and we learn more about the courts and the politics of the world and the realms and 
You get introduced to the most amazing characters of Moore and Amran and Cassian and Asriel. You learn more about Farrah's sisters and her family and her backstory. It's just so freaking good. So freaking good. And then it's revealed that Rysand and Farrah are actually mates and you see that whole thing go down and they just have such a good relationship, a realistic relationship. I love the banter that they have back and forth. They're very sarcastic and teasing with each other. It feels like a real relationship. Honestly, kind of reminded me a little bit of Eric and I, how we like snap at each other all the time and tease each other. Like I loved reading that because a lot of the time in romance books, you know, it's all mushy gushy. I just love how much of a hard time they give each other and how make fun of each other and it just was very endearing and very relatable and I love that of their relationship. And then you get the crazy twist at the end of Tamlin kind of being the bad guy and basically sacrificing his morals and his ethics because he's got on this one man hunt to find Farah however he possibly can even if it's not what she wants anymore, even if he has to sacrifice his realm, and even if he has to join the dark side, which he freaking does, he rats her out to the King of Highburn, like, what the heck, Tamlin? He is just blinded by, it's not even love, it's just power and pride, I mean, it's really pride, of her not wanting him anymore, and he's just this broken person, and it's really sad, you feel sad. And then Farah sacrifices herself and goes back with Tamlin to save her true love, Rysand, and her sisters, and Rysand's court. Her sisters get made into Fae, like against their will. It's so crazy. Oh my gosh. So much happens in the second book, and I love it so much. I think the second. I think the second book is my favorite one, but we'll get to another one that's maybe also my favorite. I really can't decide. So the second book is incredible. I love it so much. It is like the mind blowing, oh my gosh, she is so smart. She got us kind of book. Ugh. what can I say other than I'm amazed. I've never read a book like it and it's so smart, so smart. So then we get to the third book and I love the third book too. I love it all. It just, I truly could not put these books down. Once I got about a fourth of the way into the second book. I just churned them out like in a week because I was so addicted to the story, these characters. I wanted to know what was going to happen. I was just like eating up every page. I loved it so much. Do you guys know that I, I loved this series? I, I really loved it. Is that coming through? Is that coming across okay enough? Should I be more? Should I do more? No, I probably shouldn't. I should calm down a bit. <sighs> okay, Miley, calm down. Okay, so the third book. I love the third book too. The third book is like the climax. I mean, the the close to the trilogy, you go to war and it is whew, a lot to get through. I mean, they go through challenge after challenge after challenge. I love that in the third book, you get to go to all the different court, well, not all the different courts, but you get to go to a lot more of the different courts and you get to learn each court's dynamic. You get to meet all the characters of all the different courts, the high lords. You learn who's good, who's bad, the politics of war, the intricacy of the royalty. I was for all of that. I mean, that was so fascinating, so interesting to me. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Tamlin just gets worse and worse and then really throws you around with him because sometimes you think, oh, Tamlin's come to the good side. Okay, he's more redeemable. And then it's like, just kidding, Tamlin's back with the King of Highburn doing his same old crap. What the heck, Tamlin? And then he's good again and he helps Farrah escape. Like, it's just crazy. The sisters becoming Faye is just so interesting. They come and live at the night court and Elaine, is that how you say her name? I don't know. She is basically a zombie of a person and her broken love story is so horrible and sad and Nesta is there's is nothing likable about that girl and it just the fact that she was made Faye against her will makes her even worse like you have to deal with her and learn more about her and Cassian and Asriel really come into their own in this book I love their dynamic I love their relationship with Rysand I love Moore and Amryn I just this book had not only the big sweeping grand finale, total satisfying ending wrap up amazingness of bringing the first trilogy to a close, but it also had the most beautiful and anguish ridden and everything in between relationships and character dynamics. And it's just so rich. This is just such a rich 
end to the trilogy. There's so much going on, conflict at every turn, twists and turns, surprises, shocking things, really sweet, tender, good moments. I mean, this book has it all. It's an incredible finish. That last final battle is just, oh, it is intense to read. I mean, you feel like it is the last battle. You know what I mean? It's just, you guys, this series is so well crafted. It builds so incredibly well. The pacing of this series is just perfection to me. I just think it is perfect. You read the first book and you're like, eh, this feels very young adult, teenager-y, mushy gushy, ugh, take it or leave it. And then it's like, just kidding, it's supposed to feel that way because that's not the real story here. Let me bam, drop some truth bombs on you and show you what we were really here for. My God, I love this series so much. I love it so much. I love it so much! Okay, Miley, you have to calm down. <laughs> okay, and then we get to the fourth book. I'm obsessed with the fourth book. I don't think I can go as far as saying that the fourth book is my favorite of the series, simply because the series I think of is the trilogy, right? And I think the second book in the trilogy is my favorite. But the fourth book has such a special place in my heart. Reading this book, oh, and by the way, yeah, I read Frost and Starlight. I gave it three stars. It's fluff. It was nice to read. It was pretty boring, actually. And I didn't think it added anything to the series. I didn't think it was necessary or needed but I love the characters, so I liked it fine enough reading it, but it wasn't anything standout or spectacular, and it didn't move the story along at all. Definitely, truly an extra. I read it around Christmas time, which was fun because it was in the same holiday as them, but other than that, three stars, it's passable. You don't need to read it. The freaking fourth book. <sighs> when you find out that the fourth book is about Nesta, you're like, oh, really? It's about Nesta? But then you find out it's about Nesta and Cassian. And you're like, oh, so the subtle hints and the looks between them and the little bit of banter and back and forth and some behind the scenes action that's kind of hinted at in the trilogy, that is something that's actually going to be developed and explored and looked into. I'm intrigued. So I was happy to read it because of that, even though I don't really like Nesta as a character or I didn't reading the trilogy because there's not that much redeemable about her at all. I do love when she goes into the cauldron in the second book and she's like, I'm going to get you, brother. I loved that. That's like my kind of, I like that kind of character. She's just like, doesn't back down. I love that about her. But for the most part, not very likable. This book was so surprising and so realistic, so raw, so true to life. I mean, man, does she do a good dang job writing. Like, Sarah J. Mass, good job. You are a good author. You are good at your job. <laughs> I'm such a freak. Okay, this book was the most well-paced look at a person going through depression that I've ever seen. It's just so beautifully written. It is a gift to the world. I think that anyone that suffers with depression should read this because it's just so real and raw and you go on a journey of self love and discovery with Nesta. She starts this book hating herself, hating herself so much that she can't even fake it to the real world and treats everyone around her like garbage because she is so incredibly broken and distraught inside. And that's not fun to read. But what is fun to read is a subtle, well-paced, very real, detailed journey of how she pulls herself out of it. It is so incredibly redeemable. I mean, she is such a redeemable character and I loved going on this journey with her. I feel like she's a real person because it was just that realistic. I mean, I can't talk enough about the pacing of this book. It is so stinking good. And Cassian is just the perfect match for Nesta because he doesn't quit. And that's what Nesta needs. She needs someone who doesn't freaking quit. So really, this book would have been enough if I had just read about Cassian and Nesta stuck up in the tower 
working on her, getting her better, getting her to a point where she can exist as a real human and be kind to people and love herself and they develop a romance along the way, like that would have been enough for me to love this book. But then you add on the layer of an actual conflict and Nesta coming into her powers and helping them continue the politics and the fight that the realm is always facing. I mean, and then you have the side conflict that's going on between Rice and Fera and their child and how Nesta grows her relationship with her sisters and you have the Lucian and Elaine side plot that surely that's what the next book's about, right? I don't know. I'm not into the verse well enough to know what's coming next. I need to do some research, but I loved this book. I loved it. I thought it was it's like, just as soon as you think it can't get better than the first trilogy, it freaking does with this book. And it just makes me crave whatever's next because I know it's going to be amazing. I love these characters. I'm obsessed with Sarah J. Mass's writing. This world build is fantastic. The story is just so incredibly compelling. Five out of five out of five out of five out of five stars, okay? 20,000 out of five stars. Like, I loved this series so much. If you like fantasy, if you like romance, if you like super complex characters, you would love this series. You should read it. It's wonderful. I am so glad I read it. Let me know down in the comments below if you love this series as much as I do. I want to know your favorite book, your favorite character. Just give me all your thoughts on this series because I want to talk about it. And also I would love to know if you recommend other Sarah J Mass books. I've fallen so much in love with these specific characters that it's going to be hard for me to read another of her series. I know Throne of Glass, that series is much more young adult or at least I've heard, and I don't love the young adult stuff. It's just super cheesy to me, and as young adult is not my favorite genre to read. But if you think I would like it, let me know, and I will check out more of her books. But I think that is all today. I just had to get out all my vomit thoughts about this amazing series that has become my favorite. I can't wait for whatever's next, and I can't wait to talk to you guys about what you think as well. Don't forget to subscribe to help us toward our goal of hitting a thousand subscribers this year. Like this video if you want to see more book videos from me from Miley's Reading Corner. Is that what I called it? I don't even remember. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!